Welcome to this series on how math is used in construction. In this lesson, we'll be looking at squaring a foundation or a wall. When we are doing construction, making sure that things are square is very important. In our foundations, it's what sets up the whole rest of the building. If our foundation is out of square, everything else goes wrong during the whole construction. So we want to make sure we get this really correctly. So let's look at three different methods. We're going to start with trial and error. Especially for small projects, this is often good enough. Works best if you have multiple people, multiple tape measures, but it can be done on your own as well. So for this, let's look at here, I've laid out a possible foundation. Obviously way off of square, I've exaggerated this, but the principle applies as to how it works. So I've marked it out, it's 30 feet by 40 feet. Obviously not square, and I want to make sure that it is square. So how I can do this is in a rectangle, all of our angles are equal. And if all of our angles are equal, then our diagonals will be equal as well. So I begin by measuring my diagonals and I find they're not equal. One is 48, one is 52. First thing I do is to anchor the corners that I know are correct. So I'm gonna put some pins there so that I can make sure that those stay without moving. Then I'm going to go to the opposite side and I'm going to, still keeping it 40 feet long, I'm going to move it in the direction from the longest diagonal towards the shortest diagonal. That means I'm going to, in this case, move the top left. Now I'm going to check my diagonals again and this time they're 51 by 49. That's closer, but still not quite right. So once again, I'm going to shift that far side from the long diagonal to the short diagonal check again. They're both 50. I can anchor those corners. Double check that they're 30 apart on the sides, 40 across on the top and the bottom. And I have my 30 by 40 foundation that's marked out. Now if we don't want to use trial and error, we want to get it right the first time, or especially if we're working on our own, it's worth doing a little bit of math using Pythagorean theorem to be able to mark those corners accurately the first try. I'm going to start out similarly. I'm going to mark out my 40 foot baseline that I know is correct. I'm going to anchor those points. Now I'm going to figure out the diagonal using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I know that my sides are 40 feet and 30 feet. So I take 40 squared plus 30 squared is 2500. Square root 2500 to get 50. And now I can create a right angle triangle that is 30 by 40 by 50. I can mark that corner, reverse the process, make another right angle triangle that is again 40 by 30 by 50, mark that corner, and I now have my four corners marked for my foundation. Now we're going to move into a much trickier solution. This is not used very often. But in some circumstances, just running a string and a tape measure won't work. If we're on a hill, or in this case where uh, part of the foundation is going to be on a lower level, it's dug in, part of it's going to be on an upper level, and we still need to do this, we can't run strings from one altitude to another, or that angle is going to throw off our measurements. So in this case, we're going to use trigonometry and a compass. I'm going to begin by marking my first corner. Measuring out, this time I'm going to go 60 feet. Put in the pin. Going to make sure that it's straight with my street or my boundary line to make sure that those are good and accurate. Now I'm going to take a compass and I'm going to sight down that line and I find that it's 340 degrees. This does not matter if it's magnetic or true as long as you keep it consistent throughout the process. My next string I'm going to run is going to be at 70 degrees. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want a 90 degree corner. So 340 plus 20 gets us to 360 or 0 straight north. So 90 minus 20 leaves us with 70 degrees left. So 0 plus 70 is 70. So that's going to be our new angle. If we're working on our own, it won't work very good to sight that direction. We actually want to go to the far side of the hole 
to anchor our pit, so we need to sight backwards, which is 250 degrees. 70 plus 180 is 250. So that's exactly the opposite direction, 250. So then we can mark and uh, stake that string, and now we have a string going, we have one right angle. We're going to come to the other corner, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to measure 70 degrees with our compass, or go to the far side of the hole and sight 250 degrees back, and we're going to anchor that string. Now we need to work on our diagonals so we can find the corners. For this, let's just lay this out for a little illustration. If our foundation is 45 feet by 60 feet, what we need to do is turn that into a triangle so that we can find our diagonal. This time we're not going to be working with measurements because we're out over a hole, we can't get out to where that corner is. So now we need to know angles, not distances. For that we, use, we need to use trigonometry. So we're going to call our first angle theta. The tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, because that's how tangents work, opposite over adjacent. So our opposite is 45, our adjacent is 60, the opposite side is the one that does not touch the angle we're measuring, the adjacent side is the one that does touch. So if we take 45 divided by 60, we get the tangent of theta is 0.75, if we do the inverse tangent of that, we get our angle, which is 37 degrees. So we can see that our first angle down that front line is 340 degrees. So if we start with our 340 degrees and we add 37 degrees, once again 340 plus 20 takes us to 360 or 0, straight north. That leaves us with another 17 degrees from there. So our new angle is going to be 37 degrees. I'm going to run a string that direction and I'm going to stake it. Now, I'm probably going to actually want, again, to shoot from the opposite direction when I sight back, which will be 197, 17 plus 180. Then I'm going to mark directly beneath where those lines cross, and I'll show you in the next slide an easy way to do that. So now I have three corners marked. I'm going to do the next one. So the opposite of 340 is 160, and so uh, 160 minus 37 is 123, or if we look at the opposite angle, 303. And once again, I'm going to mark directly underneath where those lines cross, and now I have all four corners marked. So let's look at this method for finding where those lines cross. Here's a simple illustration showing that if we put a little metal ring onto those strings before we stretch them out, and we hang our plumb bob from that, then it will hang straight down from wherever those lines cross. You can move those lines back and forth and that string will just automatically find wherever the lines cross. It's not 100% perfect, but it is very accurate and usually plenty good for um, laying out a foundation like this. Now let's look at a wall. So let's say that we frame up a wall. We lay it all out but it still has some movability to it because there's no sheeting on it. Our wall is 10 feet high and 18 feet long. Now we can start by putting on our bottom rows of sheeting. The sheeting should have nice right angle corners as long as we've left our factory edges to the outside. So I can anchor all along the bottom and the sides and this will get me very close. The problem is we want to make sure the whole wall is square and all we've done right now is make sure that we have it um, nice and flat along the bottom and square corners on the edges. So what we're going to do, do next is anchor those, those corners. If we're laying out this wall on top of a floor, an easy way to do this is to just drive a couple of spikes into the floor through those corners, just leave them out a bit so they're easy to pull back out. And then we can find our diagonal. Using Pythagorean Theorem again, we can do 18 squared plus 10 squared is 424. Square root of 424 is 20.59. Now most tape measures don't have 0.59 on them, so if we want to convert that into sixteenths, this is easy to do. 16 times 0.59 is 9.44. So if we round that off, it's roughly 9 sixteenths. So our diagonal measurement will be 20 and 9 sixteenths. Check our other diagonal, make sure it's the same, make any adjustments we need, 
and then we'll anchor those top corners as well. Once that is complete, we can finish um, fastening the sheets that we just put down. We can add the rest of our sheets and finish anchoring them as well. And we have a nice square wall that now we can stand up in place. So to review, we have three main methods that I've shown here. Trial and error, Pythagorean theorem, and trigonometry. These will work with any object that we need to square. Some things are more important than others. Some things, one method will work better than another. But this gives you three different options. This is not a complete lesson on building foundations or building walls. This is just showing how math can come in handy when we're doing those things.